Hello students, in the last session of the poem Menting Wall, we found that the narrator and the neighbor have begun menting the walls. They have a lot of practical issues to be faced and philosophical questions to be answered. So, without much delay, let us move on to the next part of the poem. The narrator is becoming uneasy. He keeps thinking further. There is no need of a compound wall between their estates because the neighbor's property contains pine trees and the narrator's property is planted with apple trees. The trees are never going to start walking and cross over the boundary lines. There where it is, we do not need the wall. He is all pine and I am apple orchard. My apple trees will never get across and eat corns under his pines, I tell him. He only says, good fences make good neighbors. So the narrator tries to convince the neighbor that there is no actual need for the wall. But the neighbor gives the famous reply, good fences make good neighbors. He sticks on to the traditional belief that fences eliminates any chance of someone trespassing into another person's property and thereby maintaining harmony and friendship between them. Good fences make good neighbors was a popular proverb in the middle of 17th century. You might have listened to the regional variants of this proverb in your language. Students, please try to find one or two of such usages. Spring is the mischief in me, and I wonder if I could put a notion in his head. Why do they make good neighbors? Isn't it where there are cows? But here there are no cows. It is springtime, a very pleasant season, and the narrator finds himself in a mood for some mischief. He is provoked to put a notion or an idea deliberately in his neighbor's head. What is the necessity of actually making good neighbors? Any such activity is relevant only if there is some sort of conflict between the neighbors, something like a cattle trespassing and destroying the neighbor's property. But here there are no such problems. Before I built a wall, I asked to know what I was walling in or walling out and to whom I was like to give offence. The narrator is now asking some serious questions regarding the purpose of mending the wall. Before building a wall, one should have a clear idea about what he is keeping inside the wall and what he is keeping outside it. By building a wall, the narrator and neighbor are making a barrier between them. They are in fact shutting out all the possibilities that the openness in their relation could have brought. So the real question to be considered is, are we gaining something? Or are we losing greater things? The poem that began in playfulness is slowly acquiring a serious tone through these lines. Building wall is something that can cause offense. It indirectly makes the accusation that if there is no wall, the neighbor may trespass into his property. The act of building a wall is now no longer an innocent outdoor game. It is a deliberate act of separation and the narrator seriously doubt its purpose. In these lines, we can see that the wall has become a symbol of separation, mistrust and exclusion. Something there is 
that doesn't love a wall that wants it down i could say else to him but it is not else exactly and i'd rather he said it for himself the narrator repeats there is something that doesn't love a wall and wants it destroyed his skeptical mind is at work again and he adds that it may be an act of supernatural creatures like elves but he is not ready to say it aloud he warned the neighbor to come up with such an idea but the neighbor is very serious about building the wall he doesn't entertain any such silly notions the neighbor doesn't seem to make any logical thinking regarding the act he is just clinging to the concept of property and division I see him there bringing a stone grass firmly by top in each hand like an old stone savage armed he moves in darkness as it seems to me not of woods only and the shade of trees the poet watches the neighbor at work closely he is carrying stones in each hand and walking in the shade produced by the trees He appears like a wild man from stone age walking in the darkness of his ignorance. The narrator is very disappointed about the neighbor's attitude. He will not go behind his father's saying and he likes having thought of it so well. He says again, good fences make good neighbors. The neighbor seems to have made a strong decision he will never disobey his father's words or ignore tradition good fences make good neighbors he repeats and continue building the wall these lines unfold a powerful image before us we can actually visualize the image of the neighbor holding stones in his hands firmly and moving through the darkness provided by the shades of the trees with a brilliant simile these lines replace the image of the neighbor to the image of a barbaric savage from the stone age all because the neighbor adamantly keeps to his father's saying good fences make good neighbors and he speaks out the idea very clearly the narrator identifies himself as a modern man while he describes his neighbor as a person who unreasonably clings on to old fashioned beliefs the neighbor and the narrator are representatives of two entirely different ideas the wall builders and the wall breakers the narrator represents modern thoughts and the neighbor represents tradition let us summarize the lines the narrator and the neighbor doesn't actually need a compound wall because the narrator has an apple orchard and his neighbor grows pine trees the trees are never going to cross the borderline but the neighbor believes that good fences make good neighbors and he continues mending the wall after the winter the spring has arrived the poet is in a mood for some mischief and fun he tries to put an idea in the neighbor's head people need to make walls when there are cattle to destroy the other person's property but the neighbor is not convinced There are more serious questions to be answered. By building a wall, what are they trying to keep inside and what are they rejecting? Isn't it like accusing a person that if there is no wall, he may trespass into the other person's land? Now, the narrator suspects supernatural creatures like the elves for destroying the wall, but he knows that it is untrue and wants his neighbor to make such a suggestion. Now the speaker compares the neighbor carrying stones and walking through the shades of the tree to a savage from stone age walking through the darkness of ignorance.
The neighbor will never disobey his father. He repeats, good fences make good neighbors. He will stand by the tradition. So, dear students, the narrator has successfully convinced us that he is a modern man who doesn't like wars. He is mending the war out of compulsion by the neighbor. But it was the narrator who himself invited the neighbor to mend the wall. So, the reading is not completed. There are a lot of interpretations to this poem. Till we meet again, thank you.